Hey everyone, Matt Jobin with Reach Your Summit. A lot of you have been asking me about a specific tent that I have featured in my sleeping warm at camp in wintertime video. So I figured I would put together a video for you, uh, showing you the tent a little more close up and showing you the setup of that tent, as well as going over the advantages and disadvantages of the tent. So let's get started. So the tent that I have featured in that other video is the Direct 2 by Mountain Hardware. I've been extremely happy with this tent. I've been using it for about three years now, and I mainly use it in alpine environments. So up in the White Mountains in New Hampshire, uh, the Green Mountains in Vermont, places that are close to me. Uh, I dabble in the Berkshires here or there, depending on the conditions. And I'll go over my reasoning why I only use this tent in those areas mostly in just a little bit. Uh, but this tent has withstood very strong winds, 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts uh, at times that I've been out in, in this tent. And really heavy snow. It's held up really well in storms and kept me safe and comfortable without carrying uh, an extra eight to ten pounds for a different type of uh, winter tent in my pack. So it's very simple and I personally from a backpacking standpoint I love that simplicity. So let me show you this a little bit more up close. Uh, so for $550 you get an awesome very capable well-performing alpine mountaineering style tent. Uh, so this is the tent packed up here and in the stuff sack that it comes in uh, I'd say it's around four and a half five liters so it's very compact for the type of tent that it is uh, and extremely lightweight the tent is freestanding which I'll show you in just a little bit and it weighs around two pounds ten ounces for the tent and the tent poles all together. For an alpine tent and one that's made for extreme conditions, that's incredible. A lot of other tents are going to be between six to 10 pounds uh, and they have their benefits too. Uh, but for the certain times of year and specific conditions that I'm using this tent in, it's a treat to carry this in my pack. Uh, so with the tent, you also get the tent poles and you get eight stakes and some extra guy line. The stakes are your standard Y stakes, uh, just a very lightweight aluminum. I typically leave these at home. I don't use them much and I'll show you what I do use in just a second. You can carry these with you if you want, uh, but most of the time that I'm using this tent, it's in very uh, deep snow. But the stakes work well. You can always use them as a dead man anchor too if you wanted to guy out the tent using those stakes. Uh, so a total package weight for this stuff right here is around three pounds, five ounces. As I said, this tent is going to be completely freestanding so with the poles and the tent itself it's two pounds ten ounces so I personally went with buying the footprint that's designed for the tent and the footprints about seven and a half ounces and that comes in around fifty dollars uh, so it's a really great package very small to fit inside of my pack barely notice it and it leaves me with all that extra room I need for bulkier items in the winter time and a few extra items that I wouldn't carry during three season conditions. Now I mentioned I don't use the stakes too often so what I use in place of that are these snow and sand anchors from MSR. Uh, these are really durable fabric material and basically all I do is I'll make a, a ball of snow, I'll stick it right in the pouch here, bury it about six inches deep in the snow, and then you have these two pieces of cordage that are sewn into each corner, and I just connect it to the corners of the tent and 
have it anchored, uh, anchoring the tent in the snow for extra stability. And these are barely noticeable. Uh, I'd say maybe around one and a half ounces and they're around $25. So let's start setting this up. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll grab my avalanche shovel or you can bring a snow shovel with you and uh, I will pack out the area that I'm going to be setting the tent up in. So first scoping out the area around, making sure that there's no Widowmakers anywhere. Uh, with the tent, I am also going to, if I'm on a, a slight decline or incline from whichever standpoint you're in, uh, I will make sure that the entrance of the tent, if, I, if possible, is pointing downward. Uh, so that way, if any cold drafts are coming down throughout the night, that's going down around the back end of my tent and going past the doorway. If I have the tent facing toward where the cold air is coming in, chances are I'm going to have that cold air coming into the tent and I'm going to get cold a little bit quicker. Also, I'll show you in a little bit once the tent is set up, the vent on the back of that can be problematic if it's facing the wind as well if you have really, really heavy snow coming in. Uh, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. So first I will pack this snow down and this is pretty solid already. This ground is pretty well packed, but we'll pack it down. And I'm not gonna film myself packing the snow down with a shovel the whole time, so I'll skip to the next part for you. All right, so once I've got everything packed out, I'll set my footprint down. Shiny side up. Here's the footprint. We've got grommets in the front and then on the back. We just have some cordage and I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, once I have the tent set up, I also, if the snow is deep enough, I'll try to dig a trench around the tent. And what that does is it channels that cold air as well and sends it outward away from the tent after I have a, a path coming from the doorway. Now comes the fun part. The reason I say fun is because if you're not used to this tent, it can definitely be a challenge. So if you do go with this, try setting it up a few times at home before you go out with it, just to see you know, how comfortable you are with the tent. back panels and the corners are reinforced which is excellent because this tent is internally set up and I'll show you in just a few minutes and it's one of the aspects that I really love about this simplicity of this tent and the design it keeps me out of harsh conditions when I'm setting it up uh, and then here's the front with those extra grommets All right, so now that the tent is laid out, we gotta get our poles out. These poles come with a splint, very beneficial in case you end up needing it. Uh, these poles and the arc design that is proprietary to this tent can tolerate a lot of weight and abuse, but still great to carry this with you. 
you don't want to be in a pinch out in an alpine environment and not having a shelter. So the poles that you get with this, that's it. Two poles, not a lot that you have to worry about. Uh, the diameter of the poles is nine millimeters. As I said, it can tolerate a lot of abuse. I've had a lot of pretty harsh conditions that these have withstood and they're still going strong after three years. You have one end that's uh, dark gray or black with a ball at the end of it and that pops into a, a grommet inside of the tent and then the other end goes through the inner part of the tent out to that other that grommet in the front of the tent and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So here's one of those grommets that I mentioned to you and you can see it almost acts like a socket and the ball of the end of that tent pole just pops right into that. So let me show you. All right, so this end just pops right into here. And that's it. Piece of cake. All right. I'm going to disconnect this. Put my pole back. And I'm going to show you the setup now. So once you have the tent laid out, you want to open up the door. Sit on the tent. Set up your poles. Once you have your poles completely pieced together, you want to connect the two corners to the, the ball and socket. You got one, and I keep this crisscrossed. And what I like to do is get that corner toward the back. And I'll find that other one. Pop that in. Once those are clipped in and I have my poles all set, pull the tent over. And I'm going to feed it through the corner down here. And I'll show you one of those up close, but I'm going to do this one first. All right, so what I was doing is I was sending the tent pole right down through that sleeve. And it comes out right through there. Let's do the other side. If I'm setting it up internally, obviously it'll look a little different, but I'd like to show you as well. So I've got it through that sleeve. So then that slides right out and goes right into that grommet. And there's the other one. Uh, so what you do next is you take these toggles and you put them through the loops and they go throughout the tent on up in the center. And I know some other models of this tent have Velcro, uh, but this one is toggles. So I'm going to attach those. All right. So now we have the whole thing inside of the tent set up. We've got all of those spots are going to have the toggles attached. And 
that center one is key. Um, but having all those attached, it's basically going to replace having plastic clips that you would have on a tent that's going to be set up externally. Uh, but I love setting this up in the winter time when you have really strong winds blowing or snow. It's nice to be able to set up your shelter, set it up very simply, quickly, and effectively, and not have any issues uh, with being exposed to the elements for longer than you need to be. Setting up this tent the first couple of times definitely took me around, let's say, 15 minutes. Uh, so once you get this tent set up a few times, you can cut that 15 minutes down to a quicker time. So since I'm just showing you this tent in general in this video uh, and everything that comes with it, I'm going to stake it out really quick. So you notice there's an extra grommet here with some cordage and there's another one on the other side right here. Uh, there is a vestibule that can be purchased separately and used for this tent. And that'll give you a little more space, a little more storage for your gear, a little more protection from the elements. Along with the grommets and the guy out for the vestibule. You also have a bunch of high tenacity loops. Uh, more up here, up here. So you can really stake and tie this tent out and have really good uh, stability and wind protection uh, if the winds are really beating down on the tent and some of the extra guy line that you get is right here so this tent uses a polyurethane coated 30 denier sill nylon uh, it's designed to keep the, the winds from penetrating through, uh, give you really good storm proofness. It is not going to be uh, air permeable as compared to some other mountaineering tents like uh, the Rab Latok and the Black Diamond First Light. But the polyurethane coating does give me really good uh, waterproofness from snow, very dry conditions, and windy conditions. And with the permeability of this tent, if I'm out in an alpine environment, in a really dry environment, and the winds start howling and, and hitting this tent, the fabric is able to billow. And what that does is that forces air inside of the tent to circulate and helps reduce condensation. Because this is an alpine environment style tent, uh, I will only use this tent in very dry, cold, windy conditions. 
So that's why I use this mostly in the White Mountains in New Hampshire and the Green Mountains in Vermont and some, some alpine environments in northern Massachusetts uh, like Mount Greylock area that can get pretty harsh weather coming through. If you're below tree line in a subalpine environment, chances are your condensation issues are going to be far greater and you're going to end up being a little more wet and soggy inside of the tent. So if it's very dry and windy and cold, I'll use this tent for winter backpacking. I'll use it for overnights, weekends, uh, extended trips, depending on the conditions. Uh, but if I'm expecting it to be very humid and have a really heavy wet snow, uh, or the possibility of freezing rain or rain, I will keep this tent at home and I'll use a very sturdy three season tent or maybe a, a double wall uh, winter tent. So this also uh, is going to be single wall. So there's no true section of mesh aside from a couple of vents that I'm going to show you. Uh, the vestibule just covers around the outer front of the tent. It doesn't cover the whole entire tent like a double wall tent will. Uh, and you need that rain fly for that double wall tent because you have a lot more mesh and, and ventilation with those tents, which would make them more beneficial for a very uh, damp and, and heavy wet snow type of environment in the winter time. So, that being said, this tent I, I will use for the very dry, windy, cold conditions that I mentioned, or if I'm in a, an alpine environment where I'm, I have more exposure to the elements and I need a little more protection. Uh, that's what this tent was designed to do, and it excels at that. That light weight, that it, under three pounds for this, and giving me that type of performance is just it's awesome and it's been a really really good tent uh, and treated me very well over the last three years I've been extremely happy with it and I look forward to using it more and more uh, throughout the years and getting a really long life out of it if you did try to use this in uh, rainy conditions or three season conditions and you expect this to protect you from the rain Eventually it's going to soak through. The tent was not designed to perform in that type of environment or conditions. So you're definitely going to get wet. Uh, this is a two-person tent. Uh, the dimensions of this tent are 81 inches long by 45 inches wide with a peak height of 45 inches. And I'll show you the inside in just a moment with everything else in there. Uh, Having that 45 inches is awesome, so you can move around and get things situated before you head out, you know, in, in the early hours of the morning. What I love about this door is it's D-shaped, so I don't have to worry about opening this tent door and having it drape into the snow. I can you know, roll this up if I wanted to and connect this toggle to this loop out here and have that secured. All right, so here's the inside of the tent. The floor fabric is also a 30 denier uh, polyurethane coated ripstop nylon. Uh, so that's why I will definitely use a footprint or Tyvek or something underneath to give it some extra protection. Uh, what I really love also about this fabric is the color, the color choice that they have. Uh, so it allows a lot of light in and I'm going to put a picture up from uh, one of the times that I had used it recently. It's a treat. When you're out in very cold conditions and you wake up and you see that warm glow going through the tent uh, it makes you feel a little more comfortable and warm inside of it 
even though it could be in single digits or negative single digits outside. Uh, so it gives you a little more extra comfort and it's also nice to have that high visibility if you are out in uh, dangerous locations. Um, and this is also reinforced for the high tension area with those poles. Uh, so it's not as likely to puncture with the pressure from that. Uh, the poles are DAC Featherlight NSL poles. And as I mentioned, they are nine millimeters in diameter and they can tolerate a lot. Alright, so what else is nice about this D-shaped door is I can zip that down, keep the bottom open just so I can get my footwear uh, untied and off and then get my feet inside. So inside of the tent. Got my sleeping bag here. As I said, 81 inches long. So I do have a couple of inches at the head, a couple of inches near the feet. And I still have plenty of room for uh, my gear. Up here, there's a little mesh pocket that is removable with toggles if you choose. What I like to do is I'll just take my headlamp and you can tuck it away up there. That way if I need that at night, I can take that out. Um, but you can remove it if you choose. Uh, so, as I mentioned, with this tent, uh, ventilation is, is very important because this single wall fabric is not going to be highly breathable or air permeable. Um, so it can get very damp and stuffy in here, especially if you are not using this tent in the correct conditions that it was designed for. But there are a couple of vents which are very important to open up. And so you've got one here right above where I had that headlamp. And then you've got another one down near the foot. So our door entry is right here. We've got another vent right here. And that's it. So you can see if you have two people in here in the winter time, Chances are you're going to have a little bit of condensation building up. Uh, if it's just you, depending on the location, you could still have some condensation building up. Here's that light that I mentioned to you. I actually have some sunlight coming through now. Isn't that awesome? If you're out in really cold, cold conditions uh, with a lot of cloud cover but that sun is able to poke through a little bit it really brings a warm glow to the inside of the tent almost like you're next to a campfire uh, I love it so personally I am about five foot eleven, and uh, about one hundred and fifty-five pounds, and I have just enough room 
for my feet. And if I show you my head, just enough room to not be touching the end of the tent. The door also opens up this way at the top, so if you just want to peer out, you can do that. Uh, and having the having the peak height is great, uh, as you can see with all this extra room in here. I can move around. I can do what I need to do. That's my height that I have there. Here's one more look inside. So that first vent is right there. I have it zipped up now. And then the other one is in the back right here. And so, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you have to be careful with where you're setting this tent up. You don't want this in the path of heavy snow uh, because that heavy snow can channel up through here if those winds pick up and it can end up going inside of the tent. And you want to keep that vent open. You do not want it zipped shut, just so you can help prevent some condensation from building up, and so you can breathe a lot better uh, than with having that closed. So there you have it. The Direct 2 by Mountain Hardware. This tent is excellent. I've been extremely happy with it. If you're looking for a tent where you're going to be using it in high altitudes or in really harsh, dry, wintry conditions like this tent was designed to perform in, this can be an excellent option for you. If you're looking to use it in subalpine or possibly something that you can use year round including three season conditions, I would strongly recommend looking at some other options out there. If you have any further questions on this tent or you have any questions on any other gear that you saw pop up in this video or some of my other videos, feel free to reach out. You can get in touch with me in a comment below or you can get in touch with me at reachyoursummit.net. Send me an email. Send me a, a comment in some of the blog posts, uh, whichever you find to work best for you. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing everyone, I greatly appreciate it and I look forward to sharing more videos with you. Thank you.